Alrighty, for Judith Sergeant Murray and Benjamin Rush, you have two documents on your outline. They're pretty long to read uh, through by yourself without any kind of explanation. Usually in class, we read it together and I kind of go through kind of piece by piece. So I'm going to look at my computer and kind of do that simultaneously with you uh, in this video. So the Murray document on the equality of the sexes, she's arguing here that women should have access to education. And in the first few lines here, it begins, are we deficient in reason? We can only reason from what we know, and if opportunity of acquiring knowledge hath been denied us, the inferiority of our sex cannot fairly be deduced from thence. Now, we don't talk like that anymore, but what she's saying is we can only reason from what we know, and if we haven't been given the education, how could we know any more than what we know? Uh, she, she then continues in the next few lines and says, if you look at a, a, a male child who's two, and you compare them to a female child, they're the same. She says, but from what period of partiality? How is the one exalted and the other depressed? By contrary modes of education. So see, she says it's, it's the education that makes them different. And then she says, as they go on, right, the sister must be wholly domesticated while the brother is led through all the flowery paths of science. Grant that by nature, grant that their minds are by nature equal, right? They're the same, their minds are the same, but at length, when she's arrived at womanhood, she hasn't gotten all the education that her brother got. So, you know, what, um, what can she do? Uh, meantime, she herself is most unhappy. She feels the want of a cultivated mind. If she's united to a person whose soul nature made equal to her own, education hath set him so far above her in those entertainments. Um, which are produ productive of such rational felicity, she is not qualified to accompany him. So she experiences a mortifying consciousness of inferiority, right? So, you know, he knows more than her, so it makes her feel awful and inferior. But if she's married to a person, the next line says, um, uh, possesses a mind incapable of improvement, she's equally wretched. And being so closely connected to an individual, she cannot help but despise, right? If her the person that she marries um, doesn't have an education or isn't very intelligent even if he got an education, well then she's going to be annoyed with him because you could have gotten an education and you didn't. So um, she's making this connection to education and, and like wifehood, right? If she's married, um, she'll be a better wife if uh, she has an education. Um, now she says, was she permitted the same instructors as her brother? But here's an important line. She says, with an eye, however, to their particular departments. So what she's saying there is, um, we want to give her instructors, but we, we, we want to make sure what kind of education she has. It's not going to be the same education as her brother. When it says, with an eye, however, to their particular departments. Uh, she says, look, she could get astronomy, and if she has astronomy, she'll see the greatness of God. Um, if she gets geography, she'll also admire God. Natural philosophy, also, again, God. And then um, if you give her all of these things, um, she won't have room for the trifles, which are sex, um, are with too much justice, she says, accused of amusing themselves. And they would be rendered fit companions for life. Females would become discreet, their judgments would be invigorated, and their partners for life would be circumspectly chosen. So ultimately, so this above all would make women good wives. This is why you should do that. Now, Rush's document says a lot of the same things, but Rush seems to also argue that you should give women an education because it might just also be helpful for them. Now, that first paragraph there is a perfect explanation of Republican motherhood. That's why I put that first paragraph there. And in the second paragraph, he gives many of the same reasons that Murray does, but he also suggests that maybe you should just do this because it would be good for women, right? He says, give them figures and bookkeeping, um, and this will be good to assist her husband. But then she says, if she survives him, right, then she could de derive immense advantages from it. Give her geography and instruction. Um, it will qualify her not only for intercourse with the world, but also make her an agreeable companion. So do this because it'll make her a good wife, but also it lets her know what's going on in the world. Um, don't neglect vocal music. It will help her uh, vex with the vexations of her husband, with the noise of the nursery, but it will also help her. And then he concludes there, right, that um, 
children would discover the marks of maternal prudence, wisdom in every station of life, for it has been remarked that there have been very few great or good men who have not been blessed with the wife and prudent mothers. So again, right, he concludes that kind of that idea of like behind every great man is a great woman and that old kind of traditional saying. Um, that's what he's saying, that um, uh, good men have good mothers and good wives. So again, probably not, you know, it's not the vote, it's not ownership of property, but Republican motherhood um, does give women some real advantages in terms of um, becoming the means by which they can get an education. All right, if you've got any questions, you can ask them in the discussion board that's accompanied with this. Thanks.